your cost plus? Are you charging a percentage on top of your self-formed labor? I said, we are. And they're like, so are you marking up your labor? I said, we are. So you're double dipping. I said, well, if that's the way you want to describe it, sure. The client said, well, I don't want to pay double markup on your labor. I said, hey, we can approach this job differently. I can subcontract all of the carpentry out and you, that way you're not paying a double markup on the labor. They were like, well, what's the, the, the subcontracted labor rate? It's like, well, it's actually, you know, the exact same as what we're billing. For. What's up, guys? It is Nick. Uh, I want to talk about labor burden. I, I do a lot of these consulting calls with you guys. Um, I talk to at least one of you guys a week. Um, if you guys want to schedule that, nickschiffer.com forward slash booking. Um, but one of the things that comes up a ton is understanding cost and specific to labor. And there's a couple things, whether you're a fixed cost or, or cost plus, it really doesn't matter. But you, you really need to understand the true burden of labor. And, you know, with that being said, you know, let's let's back up and think about when you are pricing work, there's material costs, there's subcontractor costs, and there is labor costs. And material and subcontractor is straightforward. You're getting a bill, you're charging for it. If you, you might be marking up for charging for it, but you understand what that cost is. Um, but then we, we, we bill our labor. So for us, we primarily operate in cost plus, and we look at labor in a couple different buckets, um, self-performed labor, um, and specifics to trades like carpentry and, and general labor. Uh, and then we have supervision costs. So we have site supers, project managers, uh, operations manager, um, ad admin, things like that. Um, and depending on the job, they're structured within the job for a percentage of their time. Um, but you know what the the reality is and i'm just i'm looking at this spreadsheet here uh and i'm just gonna use a quick example but for us if i'm paying someone 26 dollars per hour um the actual employee cost to me is actually close to 36 dollars per hour and so you know that 26 dollars per hour i don't want to be billing out at 26 dollars per hour because then i'm losing ten dollars uh, and I, I also don't want to be billing out at $36 an hour because that's probably not the market rate for that person. Um, and I want to talk about market rate, and but I, I want to first go through what that $10 difference might be made up of. Um, you know, some of the things that are pretty straightforward and, and, and understood by many are, you know, payroll taxes, insurance benefits. Um, you know, you have... Um, let me back up in payroll taxes, insurance benefits. Then you have like a cell phone. Do they have a cell phone allowance? Do they have a company vehicle or a company vehicle allowance? Um, do the, you know, workers comp, you're paying workers comp on these people, depending on the role that they're in. Uh, so that's important to know. You, you can get all of this information from your insurance company. Um, but essentially, you know, we look at it as, you know, lit carpenters are going to be build at a higher rate than say a site supervisor or a project manager or clerical, which is someone in the office. Um, 401k, are you contributing to their 401k? For us, we contribute, um, we 100% match up to 3% and then we match another 50% for four and five, four and five percent if they're contributing. Um, general liability insurance, that's something that you we, we all need. Uh, so general liability, we also are paying a rate for that particular person. So again, getting that information from um, my insurance company, going back insurance benefits, payroll taxes, that's, you know, can be provided by your payroll company insurance benefits. That's, you know, if you're providing insurance to your team, health, medical, dental, um, and health, vision and dental. Uh, and we do. So we understand what that cost is. And all of this, we're, we're basically dividing it by per hour to understand what the hour cost is, hourly cost is. So that's that's pretty straightforward. Those are hard costs that you can look at and know that that's going to uh, what what that's going to cost. So right there, we're adding you know about six dollars, almost yeah, almost seven dollars uh, in just those costs. But what other costs on top of that are we not factoring in? Well, holidays and vacation time are often ones that are 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 missed. Uh, so holidays and vacation time. So you know you have to consider how many holidays a year are you giving your employees, uh, and this is all factored by 2,080 hours, which is basically 40 hours a week at 52 hours. 
Um, so, you know, we want to understand what the, the cost of having those holidays off is per hour. Uh, and also vacation time, if they're, if they're accruing, uh, you know, another week of vacation, if they're accruing two weeks of vacation, like how much additional PTO are they accruing? Um, and what is the cost of that, you know, and then dividing again by the hour the, the there's a couple of things with that. You, you, you want to understand if that person is out, you know, the, the truth is that you're actually paying double for that because that person is no longer here. So you're actually having someone else cover that role. So that role doesn't only cost you the person that is out, but it's also costing you the person that is replacing that role. So in theory, you should be charging twice as much for the time that is being uh, taken off for that PTO. Um, the other things, software costs. So for example, we have, everyone gets a company email. That company email costs me $6 per month for that employee. I know it sounds really small, but you add these things up and over time, you know, sure it's 36 bucks a year, but you're, you have to, you have to be considering that that goes into your overhead. It's not necessarily nickel diming. It's, it's making sure that you're understanding exactly what this person costs you per hour, um, per week, per month, per year. Um, you know, PDF viewer, if you're paying like other softwares that we're paying for blue beam, um, you know, if we're paying a subscription for Slack, but by, by user, if we're paying for a subscription for a PDF viewer, um, if we're paying for a subscription for whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that we're, we're capturing that cost. Um, and, you know, going back to vehicles for just a minute, you know, when we look at the vehicle, it's not just what that payment is, but we have, you know, we have it organized per vehicle. So we know exactly what vehicle they're getting, what that payment is per month, um, what that insurance payment is per month. Um, and then what we do is we estimate the fuel and maintenance cost. And the way we estimate that is we just look at previous year. Yes, they're going to fluctuate, but we take that previous year, average it out by the amount of vehicles, and then attribute an equal amount to each vehicle. And we just assess that once a year. So there's a chance that, you know, we have a year that is, is more, but hey, we look at it. Um, in a way that is, um, you know, at least close to, um, and, you know, essentially we want to put all of these things together, understand what that true cost is. Uh, and in that example of $26 an hour here, they're about $36 per hour that that person costs now the billable rate. So I'm going to back up for a minute. And, you know, I said that we were primarily cost plus I was looking at a job. Um, I'm sorry, we were pricing a job. And I had a client come to me and they said, Hey, I'm looking at this, you know, your cost plus, you know, your percentage fee, but are you charging a, a, a percentage on top of your self performed labor? I said, we are and They're like, so are you marking up your labor? I said, we are. And they're like, so you're double dipping. I said, well, if that's the way you want to describe it, sure. Like then that, that, that might be the way that yes, then we are double dipping. We are, we are marking up our marked up labor rates. Um, and you know, the client said, well, I, I don't want to pay double markup on your labor and, you know, politely, I didn't say it so crass, but essentially it's, we are billing the, the, they were talking specifically about carpenters. So I, I said, Hey, we can approach this job differently. I can subcontract all of the carpentry out and you, that way you're not paying a double markup on the labor. And they were like, well, what's the, the, the subcontracted labor rate? It's like, well, it's actually, you know, the exact same as what we're billing you. So, you know, you're not going to pay a double markup, you're, but you're not going to save any money. You're going to pay the exact same amount of money. Um, but you but you don't get the, the, the company guy, the guy that's been trained by us, that's been invested by us, that is in our culture, that understands what we're doing. You're getting a subcontracted carpenter, which, Hey, they will do a great job. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a different approach. And when I explained that they understood the got it. So that, that additional markup that we're making for those people, we, that, that money goes into the company to invest in those people, whether it's, you know, a, a bonus at the end of the year, whether it's a, a, a company event, whether it's training, um, or whether it's simply fixing mistakes that they're making on a project. And that's another one that we look at. So we look at billable rates per job description. So for example, a carpenter, you know, for, for simplicity, we might say a carpenter gets billed out at say it's a hundred bucks an hour. 
um, and say their burden is $60 an hour uh, at the low end and $70 an hour at the high end. Again, using these for, for loose description, but at $60 an hour, they're on the lower end. So they're, they're, they're less experienced and they're going to be making, we're going to make a $40 uh, um, profit on, on every hour that they, they work. Um, and then from the top tier, we're going to make $30 an hour. We're going to make less money per hour that that person works, even though they're more skilled that we're, we're making a lesser margin on them. And the reason being is that at the beginning or at the entry level of that role, they're going to make more mistakes because if they weren't making any mistakes, they would be worth more and we would be able to increase their, their pay. And now they're making a smaller margin. So the reality is, is when they're making the top end of that scale, that we, we, we should be netting the same profit. Less of it is going to rework in mistakes. So we just simplify that. We say, hey, a carpenter is going to make or build, be build out at $100 an hour. And for us, there's a sliding scale on the back end as to what that person gets paid. Thus, what that person is a burden to the company and ultimately leaves a little on top for additional profit because we are taking the risk and having these employees in-house rather than subcontracting every everything. So it's important to understand that you you want to be billing out at your your your, your market rate, you know, the, the benefit should not be that they get a, 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 a good carpenter for a lesser rate than if you were to subcontract it. The benefit should be that these guys are trained under your, your company and that they are a company man that understands what the ethos is of the company and that you've invested in them to, to make sure that they're producing at a high quality. Uh, again, nothing against the subcontracted carpenters. It's just a different format. Um, the other piece of advice I would, I would, um, add to this is that we, you want to have the labor rates defined in your contract, especially if you're cost plus or time and material. Um, you know, you really want to make sure that these are defined. So you, you know, and I'll give you the, the specific example. I was in a position where I did not have them defined many years ago and unfortunately got into a, a, a difficult situation with a client that they, you know, demanded that they saw our labor backup, like the labor rate burden backup. And we didn't have that produced. It wasn't something we were tracking. We were billing out at an hourly rate and our contract didn't state our hourly rate. So there was no agreement as to paying that hourly rate. So for us, we now make sure in our contract, it states every role that's in our company, operations manager, project manager, site superintendent, carpenter, lead carpenter, et cetera, uh, and what their defined rate is. So by including that in your contract, you're legally agreeing with the, the, the client or, or you know, the homeowner as to what those rates are. And that what what you will be billing those rates at, uh, and that's really important. I, I think I have to say that this is not legal advice. This is just advice in in which I've learned from, um, and 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 truthfully, it's really been this exercise of understanding what the the our labor rates are, understanding what the true cost of these people are, and and what the what it takes for the for us to invest in these people. Um, and making sure that we're profitable because we're taking on more risk by having more people and more employees and more payroll. So we are deserving of the additional profit for that. And I feel strongly about that. Um, you know, I did, before you guys ask, the spreadsheet is on my website on nickshiffer.com. Uh, I do have it up there so you can download if you want to check it out. Uh, it's under the shop tab. Um, but this is something that, you know, it's, it's relatively simple, uh, but it gives you in our, in the opportunity to plug in some numbers and understand what this, these costs are. Um, and if you were to use this, just make sure you're checking in with, you know, your payroll company and your insurance company, understanding, you know, the, the true cost behind these things, your 401k company, um, and then working through, uh, the specifics of any other hard costs that you might consider part of the business. So hopefully this is helpful. It's a question I get a ton, uh, which is why I took the time to get that up on the website and why I'm speaking about it today. Um, I appreciate you guys listening. I'll see you guys next week.